So, the Affordable Care Act, what is it going to change? It's very hard to distill that into one or two slides, but in terms of insurance, most important things to keep in mind, students are allowed to stay on their patient's insurance until age 26. There are more people eligible to get Medicaid now. The threshold has moved to 138% of the federal poverty level. It was 90% and only for people who had children in most states. This includes a large swath of people. There, it implements something called an employer mandate where employers with over 50 employees are required to provide an option for group health coverage to their employers, to employees, or to pay a penalty. An important provision is the elimination of pre-existing condition clauses that will not allow uh, insurance for someone who has certain conditions or that won't cover those conditions once they are insured. So there is guaranteed issue of insurance. Now in exchange for that, one of the, one of the other provisions is the individual mandate. It says that individuals have to get health insurance coverage or they're subject to a tax penalty. There are a lot of exceptions to this, including religious exceptions, income exceptions um, to this individual mandate. But just understand that a big part of the reason it's there is because of this idea of not being able to exclude people with pre-existing conditions. If, in theory, I could wait until I was sick and then go buy insurance, right, if the company has to issue it to me. So that's part of why the individual mandate there is there. Another big part of Obamacare that is designed to expand access to health insurance is the individual health insurance exchanges. The way this works, it's basically like Amazon for health insurance. You go to the website healthcare.gov, type in your zip code, and between November 1st and January 31st, you're allowed to enroll in health insurance plans purchased as a private individual. Now, the important part of this is that depending on your income, there are subsidies available to you, up to 400% of the federal poverty level. If your income is within that range, 400% or below, you can qualify for a sliding scale subsidy. So the less that you make, the more you'll be able to get a subsidy. To give you an idea of what the federal poverty level is, it's it's around 24000 for a family of four right now in 2016, and about 11500 or 12000 for a single individual. So potentially someone making $96,000 per year, a family of four, could still get some level of subsidy. There are also cost-sharing subsidies so that people also can get help with their co-insurance. So what's happened to the rate of insurance? Young adults getting coverage, that's accounted for about $3 million additional in- with Medicaid. Now, after a Supreme Court decision, it became optional for states to expand Medicaid. 31 states plus the District of Columbia have decided to expand their Medicaid program at this point. And so this has covered about 8.2 additional individuals, or at least this many people have become eligible. Many of them have become covered. 19 states have not expanded their coverage, so this causes 6.2 million folks approximately to miss out on the opportunity to obtain Medicaid had their state expanded the program. With individual insurance exchanges, as of 2016, 12.7 million people have signed up for this year. So you put that all together, it's it's over 20 million people have gained health insurance. And if you look at the rate of uninsurance over time, you see that there are some seminal events throughout history that have lowered the rate of uninsurance. One of the big ones was when President Johnson implemented the Medicare and Medicaid programs back in 1965. As you can see, about the time that the health insurance exchanges opened up, we started to see a, a drastic decline in health uh, in, in insurance. So that nowadays, whereas when the Affordable Care Act was first implemented, the, health, the uninsurance rate was around 14%, now it is 9.2%. A quick final word about accountable care organizations, simply because this is something that you're going to hear a lot about. This is probably going to be a way of life as you move through your careers. Now, an affordable care organization is not a type of insurance. It's an organization that, sort of like HMOs, are really intended to improve 
cost and quality of care. These are provider-led organizations that manage the full continuum of care for some defined population. And there is accountability in terms of actually changing reimbursement levels based on how these organizations do at managing the cost of care and meeting certain targets in terms of health outcomes. This And this does tend to consist of integrated networks of providers and facilities like health systems. University hospitals operate three accountable care organizations, one for Medicare patients, one for pediatric patients, and one for its own employees. And a key part of this is data to track outcomes. Thank you.